Hey boys, welcome back to some more Rugby League Live 4 Fan Hub Edition, and uh, in this video, a little bit different, I actually, I decided to make another Dream Team, so if you remember, I actually did this for Rugby League Live 3 when we had the Fan Hub, you know, going through all the teams and stuff, I uh, I did make a Dream Team, and I, if I can find that video, I might link it in the, the description, because obviously that team is going to be quite a bit different to this team, um, but I actually streamed a couple of nights ago, and someone someone posted a a comment saying make a team for Rugby League Live Four, and it sort of reminded me that yeah, I made a I made a dream team uh, when Rugby League Live Three was was uh you know coming out. So I thought yeah, let's let's do it. So um, I've I've gone through uh, picked seventeen players. It was very difficult. I um I do expect a lot of people will disagree with my team, and you know that's that's cool. I uh you know. Post uh, post your own team in the comments section. I'm I'll be eager to have a look. I mean, there was obviously a lot of players. I pretty much only did it for like the players I were playing because obviously a fair few really good players injured. Um, you know, Greg Inglis probably would make it. Usually, Matt Scott would usually make it. But I decided just to do it for the guys that you know pl are playing this year, not injured. So let's let's go through it. So at fullback, obviously a very tough choice. But I've gone with Billy Slater. Um, the other, the other guys I was considering, James Tedesco and Tuovas Shek, but I just think, I think Billy Slater has been the best fullback since coming back this year. He has been outstanding. Tedesco has probably been, uh, I don't know, I actually probably would go with Tuovas Shek next this year. I think Tuovas Shek has been more consistently good this year, and then Tedesco, he, he's been good as well. I just think he's had a few. A few, a few quieter games. Um, Tedesco, uh, Tuovasek was a little bit quiet at the start, but I think he's been consistently better previously. And uh, Billy Slater just has been so good since coming back. So I've had to, I had to go with Billy. Uh, on the wing, we have Valentine Holmes. Um, I went with Holmes just because he's just, uh, he's just, uh, he's just a gun, really. Um, it might be a bit of a strange choice because you know he does play fullback. For the Sharks, and he's he's only played a few games on the wing and rep level, but I've just I've gone with Holmes. I mean, again, there's a few choices. There's you know it's obviously Corey Oates. You'd go with another guy. I was thinking was Vunivalu, but I I've, I've gone with Valentine Holmes just because. On the other wing, we have Jordan Rapana, and I think this is this one's pretty obvious. This one's pretty obvious. You know, Jordan Rapana. Yeah, he's been he's probably been the best winger in the game for the last for the last couple of years uh last few you know last few games for the Raiders he hasn't been amazing but still like John Rapana uh incredible winger just uh you know I'm pretty sure most teams would love to have him um in the centers we have first off we have James Roberts I uh I did initially have Will Chambers in uh, in the centers here, but I I decided to switch me up with Roberts just because I think, you know, Chambers I I think Chambers is arguably, you know, probably one of the best centers in the game. But uh, I've gone with Roberts just because he's got that little bit more X factor, a little bit better in attack, and uh, his defense is not you know he doesn't he's not bad defender either. James Roberts I honestly I can't believe Roberts didn't get a sh chance at Origin this year. In the next center, Dylan Walker. I think Dylan Walker has been the best center this year. Now, Dylan Walker, probably a lot of people don't like Dylan Walker because, you know, he's a, he can be a bit of a dickhead on the field. I'm sure a lot of Raiders fans don't like Dylan Walker, but um, he is, I, I personally think he's been the best center all year. I think I think he's a shoo-in for the center of the year. I, if I said I'm surprised James Roberts didn't get picked, I am extremely surprised Dylan Walker didn't get picked Um this year for the Blues, I I would replace him for either Dugan or Jared Hayne. Dylan Walker has been incredible. He is he's changed the games for Manly when they've been down. Like just some of his runs out of his own end have been so good. Like yeah, he he's been incredible. Uh, Dylan Walker there. The halves the halves are pretty self-explanatory. Like I you know who else could you pick? It's obviously JT, and then we got Cooper Cronk. You know obviously. I was thinking maybe maybe choose a couple of young guys in you know uh, Anthony Milford and maybe um, halfback like I don't know who's a young halfback like a, I'm thinking of like 
Ash Taylor that I, I wouldn't really put Ash Taylor in a dream team yet. Um, obviously, Brody Croft, a very young guy, has a potential to get up into the into a dream team type thing. Um, for New South Wales, I mean, Nathan Cleary could put there, but I, you know, I couldn't go past Kronk or Thurston. They've been the best halves combo for so long now, and it's going to be a shame when, uh, when the combo is broken up, honestly. Uh, the forward pack is where we get pretty pretty strong here. Um, front row, we got Sam Burgess. He is, obviously, he's been playing a lock uh, for the Rabbitohs lately, but we, um, to fit him in the side, I think it was best he was playing front row, and he, he can play front row, he's done it before, and pretty, you know, most of the games he plays for the Rabbitohs, he does eventually have a spell, like, in the front row, like, he'll take those hit-ups off the kickoff, so he's not, uh, he can definitely play front row. Uh, Cameron Smith, obviously, is best dummy half in the game, without doubt. Uh, next prop, we have Manda Power, who I think has been, I think he's been the best player um, this year, apart from getting suspended for like uh, four or five games, because again, I was when I was streaming, I'm like, I, I was asking people who was like on top of the Delhi M's because I hadn't been hadn't looked at it um, pretty much all year, and I thought Tapao must be like close to being the top, but apparently he's not very high up at all because I forgot he got suspended for like four or five games earlier in the season. Otherwise, I think he would be way up there because he is. Him and Dylan Walker have sort of, you know, just been outstanding for the Seagulls. He's been probably the most dominant forward, in my opinion. Uh, the other, uh, the second row, Matt Gillette. Um, I think Gillette's probably been the Broncos' best forward this year. He hasn't. I don't think he's quite brought his form to the to the Origin arena yet. Obviously, I'm making this game, uh, making this video, uh, making it Tuesday night. The game, the video will go up tomorrow, Wednesday, sometime, and before Origin 3, so I'm, uh, I'm going to be nervous about that, but so far, Matt Gillette hasn't really been that good this uh, this year in Origin, but in club footy, he's been just outstanding. So many try savers, so many just big plays. He's been incredible. Uh, Boyd Cordner, you know, one of the best second roles in the game. He just, uh, just uh, ever reliable, really, just great player. Uh, at lock, of course, Jason Tamalolo. Look at the goddamn legs on Tom Lolo there. My God. Um, but yeah, pretty easy choice right there. Um, yeah, Tom Lolo, of course. On the bench, the bench is probably, maybe people will disagree with the bench. Uh, there was a lot of choice here. Probably the diff most difficult choices to make. But uh, I chose Cameron Munster to be the utility. I think Cameron Munster is, is, is the... Um, He's just the ideal utility. He can play so many positions. He could play fullback, wing, center, 5'8". I think he could even play like at like lock because he's a great defender, good ball runner, good ball player, can kick. Um, ideal utility, in my opinion. And uh, like the biggest thing about him, in my opinion, he, like he's got all the skills. He's quick. He's uh, he's athletic. But um, I think the biggest trait he's got is his toughness. Like he's such a good defender. Like if you look at like the stats for the Storm games, when he plays five eight, he makes like twenty to thirty tackles every game. Like he gets in there, gets in, d does the hard stuff, and he's a good defender. Like he he's actually like a really good hitter. So Cameron Munster, I think, is an ideal utility. Uh, Dylan Napper. Of course, we had to have big Dylan Napa here. Just that impact off the bench. You know, how can I, how can I not choose Dylan Napa? I think in game two, like he's been good for the Roosters for the last few years. He's been like one of the best forwards. But um, Origin game one didn't quite have the impact I was expecting. But game two, that second half, he was just outstanding. He just, you know, he just carried the Queensland uh, forward pack by himself. In my opinion, he was outstanding. Uh, third one here, Cohen Hess. This one was a difficult choice. I mean, I, there was a lot of guys I was thinking like Jake Jaboyevich, Josh Papali. Um, I was even thinking like Paul Vaughan or Jack DeBellin, but I went with Cohen Hess just because another young, just absolute monster on the bench. And, uh, like I said, I'm doing this before game three and I think, I think game three, Cohen Hess is going to, going to play extremely well. I, I just have a feeling Cohen Hess is going to, he's going to get more game time and I think he's going to, he's going to kill it game three. So I'm hoping anyway, <laughs> I'm hoping, but yeah, Cohen Hess, another X-Factor player, just, uh, you know, 
this is, you know, obviously I have a bit of bias in this team. It does have a lot of Queenslanders, but, you know, that's to be expected. It's actually, it's actually a fair few New South Wales players as well. A couple in the back line, a couple in the forwards, and a few, few New Zealanders as well. Uh, and the last, the last man, we had to choose Andrew Fafita. I, uh, I could not choose Fafita. He is, you know, he's one of the most damaging forwards in the game. And, you know, combined with Dylan Napa, Cohen Hess, Cameron Munster, I think that's a pretty, a pretty decent X-Factor bench there with the likes of Tamalolo, Corner, Gillette, Powell, Burgess. I, you know, I think that team would be a fairly formidable side. And then Andrew Fafita coming off the bench. I had to pick him. I didn't want to pick him, but I had to. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's that's my team. That's the dream team. You know, like I said, I think the forward pack I wouldn't really wouldn't really change it. The the bench I'm I'm happy with. Maybe Cohen has so you know people could say a few other guys deserve it, which I I could agree with. Uh, but the back line is probably the only real area where I'm like, yeah, I, I would change some things around here if I if I thought about it for for a bit longer. I mean, Valentine Holmes, all these guys I could switch out with other guys, but. Uh, that's that's my team. That is my team. Uh, yeah, if you guys have a have a dream team, post in the comments section. I'm like I said, I'm interested to see what you guys think. But uh, yeah, just a, a bit of a different video in the in the lead up here. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like if you did, and I'll see you guys in the next one.